a virtual machine on your existing computer or typically referred to as your host um, computer. The virtual machines are often referred to as a guest um, since they are running on top of the OS itself. Here you can see what I have is a Windows 7 virtual machine. It's currently not started right now. Typically in my work day though, this Windows 7 virtual machine is already running. Um, I'm using it for other activities and of course the easy thing is, is if I want to sim um, I just simply switch over to it and turn the simulator on just like I would go to a physical machine and, and turn the simulator on there. Um, so it's very, very easy to do. The simulator is typically already running as opposed to um, having to reboot your machine into boot camp or another environment. You know, stop what you're doing on the current machine. You know, stop your work activities or if you're doing some of photos or whatever and then reboot the machine to, uh, to sim and then to stop that and restart everything. Kind of a hazard. Um, so what you're seeing here, you, you see my Mac, my uh, iMac here is uh, it's an i5 core, there's four cores here, uh, 32 gigs of memory. Um, I'm running the latest version of Parallels, Parallels version 8. I've been running this since Parallels 6 and Parallels 5 as well, and also on my MacBook Pro. I've got a four-year-old MacBook Pro now um, that I've run with Parallels in order to run Phoenix or... Uh, or uh, real flight. <clears throat> Typically what you will see is you store your your virtual machine somewhere out there on your hard drive. Um, in this particular case I, I generally you want to op optimize performance so I recommend you put this file, the file that makes up the OS hard drives um, of your virtual machine, put it on another disk other than your, your um, operating system disk this will allow um, your OS to run um, with no contention while the virtual machine is running itself. In this particular case, I have a uh, I don't know, like a four gig or a four terabyte uh, Thunderbolt hard drive here. Again, I've I've been running this since Parallels four, five, and six. Um, you know, I think some USB two, um, but mostly you know, with USB three. Uh, certainly enough enough performance to uh, to run the OS. But you can see this, this, this environment is running here on my Mac. Um, if I tab through my apps, tab through my Finder, uh, tab over to my browser. Tab through previews and things. And of course I can tab right back to Parallels. The tabbing allows you to simply um, cycle through your apps on the Mac. Now, this virtual machine is not running yet. We'll go ahead and start it. Close these other windows out. I don't need these guys anymore. Now, even though it's in a window right now, I typically run the virtual machine in uh, full screen mode. It's going to come up initially under Windows mode. You can see it's just a simple window. I'll go ahead and put in my username and password. So this looks like a Windows machine simply running inside a window on my Mac desktop. And again, I can still alt-tab through various apps and windows and screens. And tab back to my, my now running Windows machine. On here, I've got all your traditional uh, Windows applications, you know, PowerPoint, Exchange, various other apps. Uh, in this particular case, obviously, we're going to be running Phoenix. <clears throat> and there's a number of different views. Again, this is currently running in the Windows mode, where the, the virtual machine itself is only running within a window within the Mac OS X desktop. I do have the ability to run this in full screen and use all of my multiple displays here. I've got uh, three monitors connected to this machine. And essentially, my my Windows desktop could take up three monitors as well. <clears throat> you could also run this in coherence mode, which allows the the Windows-based applications to run alongside your Mac OS X apps without it, it making things very transparent as far as which oh, it looks like everything's basically running their Mac OS X. 
since usually when I'm simming, I, you know, the, the graphics rendering, you want that to kind of run the, the machine itself. I usually run it in full screen mode. One of the things you do want to make sure you do after you create a virtual machine, uh, this is, this, uh, even though it's a virtual machine, you have to do all of the things you traditionally do with a physical server with regards to managing it. That includes all of your Windows updates, um, installing any um, drivers, all of that activity. You still do no, no different than, than a uh, physical machine. You can see this is running Windows 7 Professional. Um, I, and, and you can also create a virtual machine only for simming. Uh, you know, if you didn't want it to load other drivers or have, if you're doing, if you've got a Windows box as a VM with a lot of complex software, you know, you may, you may just create a VM simply for the purpose of, of uh, simming that only has the, the real flight or uh, Phoenix installed on in it or, or the application you, you so choose to sim in. In this particular case, um, you know, you can see here's my typical browser. I'm just, I'm just simply launching IE inside a uh, inside my virtual machine. And just like me on Windows. See what the latest is here at RC Hilly Nation. Next is uh you know simply uh, when you when you connect your USB devices on the Mac, it will ask you if you want the device to be connected to the host on your Mac OS X or to one of your virtual machines. And again, you can be running multiple virtual machines. Um, that screen will pop up. So in this particular case, I'm running with a SimStick. I'll be using my DX8 uh, Spectrum uh, receiver here. Uh, that's already connected. The drivers have already been connected. Everything's already connected. And again, you can see I can I can bounce between Safari here on Windows on uh, Mac OS X, and I can switch right back over into Windows. What we're going to do now is we're going to put this in full screen. And now my machine just looks as if it was a PC. Um, you know, it, a lot of people when they see the screen, they just simply think it is a PC. I still have the functions to tab out. I'm right back over to Mac OS X. Cycle through things, and just as if I was using this as a regular old computer. And I can tab right back into Windows here. So we're going to go ahead and launch Phoenix. So I run uh, a little mini app called Fraps, which allows me to see how many frames per second my environment's running, as well as um, allows me to record uh, my screens, my simulations as well. So the little number in the upper left-hand corner is giving an indication of that. It's also good from the standpoint of anytime you're running any video applications, let me go ahead and turn my transmitter on here, that um, you can see how many frames per second they're actually achieving. In this particular case, uh, this virtual machine is running right around uh, 50 or 60 frames per second. More than enough to support uh, the rendering of of the graphics needed for Phoenix in this particular case. So you saw after I turned on my transmitter, um, it's now recognized. I've got the throttle hold on my switch. And you see I've got my blade movement here going. And we'll just fire up the uh, simulator here. Very smooth scale graphics. Um, easy to see, no clipping.
So I have my sunburst out there as well. And even though I'm in Phoenix right now, you know, my, my Mac OS X applications are still running. You know, my mail is still getting mail. My calendar is still working. And I could land and tab out and go look at those applications and switch right back into Phoenix. Kind of got, as I was talking, lost my orientation there. I was thinking more about switching out and oh, hitting, uh, you can see here I can switch through my apps, I can switch over my Sonos controller, and uh, turn on some music if I wanted to.